Hi Ritesh. Hi Flynn, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to Capit Simplified. But that would be wrong to tell you because you've been part of the family for a long time. So welcome to our channel. Thank you. Um, hi. So before I let you introduce yourself, I just briefly, I think, give you an int int introduction from my time with you. So for the viewers, if I were to say, uh, talk about Ritesh for like a minute or half a minute, uh, the first characteristic that I would use is that he is one of the most um, nagging uh, applicants that they've ever had. <laughs> And I say that in a good way, so which is why I want all of your viewers to hear it because uh, he has that one attribute that we look in every applicant that comes in, which is that he was really invested in his own application. He took our support, yes, but his application was his own, which is why every time I went back to him with a document or something, I would know that my one hour, my one next one hour is gone because he would have, have that many notes. And that exactly is how you should uh, craft your application because you know at the end of the day whoever supports you it should be your own uh, that's my two cents uh, Ritesh but over to you would you like to briefly introduce yourself yeah sure thanks for that though <laughs> yeah so hello everyone uh, my name is Dr. Ritesh Chavla and uh, I come from a come from the northern Indian part but I completed my BDS from Pune itself and uh, I began my uh, into school journey I think uh, in March of 2021 and that was my first cycle itself uh, since then I have been involved with them for uh, my application support and uh, yeah I think I received my interview invite uh, later later March next year that is March 2022 and uh, yeah things have been really great since then yeah so I think that was all about me for everyone watching before we start the questions uh, about a little about his profile is uh, Ritesh is a was a fresh grad when he uh, applied. He had bare minimum experience because he had just finished his college from India, his home country. The second thing would be that I remember is your visa. He had a uh, tourist yeah. visa, right? You did not yeah. have any other uh, visa in the US. So on that, he did a preceptorship and on that, he got some basic experience there and the rest he did from uh, when he was back here. I remember he went there and came back. So he was here in India for some time as well. So that's those are two things that I know a lot of you are concerned about visa and uh, how much experience you have. So this is for you as well. My first question would be Ritesh, something that I think everyone's thinking about now, especially because interview invites are coming in and for some people rejections are coming in. How did you get the motivation to get through the cycle from point A to Z? Okay, so I think basically that really depends on how you take those things. Uh, for me, yeah. trust me, the first cycle was full of rejections. The only, I mean, the only thing I saw in my email was just rejections until Colorado happened. So I know that it, it can be, you know, a really hard, really tedious and a really anxious process. But trust me, you will get there. Uh, motivation wise, I would just say that invest yourself in your own application. That is really, really important getting help from someone is like 5% of the total success part but the 95% the personalization you put into your application is really something that they can see through um, last I would say that uh, don't go, go around and meet people who are there to demotivate you uh, trust me I met a lot of seniors uh, who clear cut told me on my face that I don't really have a masters I don't have a green card I don't have experience that there is no point even trying so don't don't let that get into your head that is absolutely i would say rubbish because i was exactly that profile and i got in so if i can get in you definitely can and uh, trust me it will take its own time but you will get in definitely you will get in all right yeah that makes sense to each their own but i think what's important is to find what works for you and then stick yeah. by it exactly to keep motivated all right uh, on that note of you know your profile in quotes so um i want to, i because i know your journey i think it'll be great if you can talk like speak out so that the viewers can hear and tell them how to sort of debunk the biggest myth about uh, applying to schools that a certain school needs a certain profile if not you would not get through is that true or is it a myth i would say it's true? It is true for some schools, like let's say Tufts, for example, has a really strict policy for green card applicants. 
uh, but it is always you know it, it is my belief that it is always uh, if it is feasible for you it is better to take a chance maximum they will just reject your application that is the maximum that can happen and uh, i applied to indiana and uh, indiana had a, a visa status requirement they already wanted someone who has a visa status uh, but i got an interview from indiana and i even got accepted at indiana so that you know that throws that particular segment out of the window i'm not saying that you do not need to respect their requirements definitely respect their requirements but give it a shot i would say um okay. another instance would be temple temple wanted a uh, i mean they preferred a two year clinical experience for their applicants mm. but again uh, when i applied to temple this i didn't apply to them last cycle uh, this cycle i applied and i had a bare minimum of seven months of experience and i was called for an interview so yeah it basically depends on you you need to give it a shot to see if you are a fit for the school so yeah that that's definitely a myth that they want people with experience or they want green card status and things like that that's definitely a myth yeah okay do you want to quickly tell them uh, from where all which all schools you got acceptance and which all schools you got invites from interview invites yeah okay so last year the only school that invited me was cu and that was the only acceptance i had last year uh this year i had uh, invites from indiana uh, loma linda university uh, university of california san francisco uh, temple university and uh, university of the pacific i was accepted at indiana university but uh, Uh, I'm awaiting results for the others. I didn't appear for the bench test for Loma Linda University and the Temple University interviews. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Um, another thing that uh, is new right now for uh, CU especially is Casper. That's what you would have heard. Like the next this uh, applying batch has to take Casper. So for some reason, I've noticed that over the past few years, that Casper is something that makes a lot of people quite uh, panicky as to how do I. you know attempt it uh, how do i get a good uh, quartile and all of that so from your experience uh, can you give us a little you know and tell on that how did you practice what you have to take care of how to get a good score okay so i appeared for casper twice for indiana wanted a casper from the last cycle but ucla wanted casper from this cycle and uh, both of the times surprisingly for me were good the only part that bugged me was the time that i had to be at uh, I had to appear for it at 2:30 a.m. in India. Uh, apart from that, yeah. Apart from that, they just basically want you to see how humanly you will react in uh, different scenarios. They want you to. Yeah. They basically want to see that you can think beyond uh, a certain, you know, stereotypical response. Like they give you a scenario, they just want to know whether you will straight away dive into a really harsh response, or you have the capacity to think about a situation, think about where it, what the consequences can be for you as well as the other people involved, and then give your answer. Um, the new part for this cycle was the video responses, so that mm-hmm. took me a little while to get adjusted to. But practice-wise, I just Google random scenarios. There's I think Bemo, uh, Bemo is a good site for getting. Uh, uh random scenarios and uh, you just need to you know be as human as possible and uh, yeah that is the only key i i could understand from appearing for casper casper yeah a lot like also how you answer ethical questions yeah. how do you ethically or humanly think about from everyone's perspective right exactly yeah you need to just keep everyone in mind and then give your answer it just can't be about you okay <laughs> okay nicely put All right. So let's speak a little about CU specifically, since you you know went through the application, you got acceptance as well. So uh, if you were to tell the current year applicants top three things that they should keep in mind specifically for CU while applying, what would they be? Okay. So CU specifically is uh, com- according to me is a completely different school. Uh, they do look mm-hmm. here at they look. at your stats definitely they really want good students but beyond that they want good humans uh, they really want to see whether you can uh, you know adjust with everyone or just are you a person who will just study 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 and do you know don't not interact with anyone and things like that so that is one thing that cu looks for i believe uh, next uh, uh, my reason to choose cu was the fact that they are really really high on innovation i practically love innovation and the fact that they involved they introduce virtual reality to the industry uh, really attracted me so i am a person who likes innovation so that was another reason for me to choose cu and uh, 
I think next would be the place itself, the people there. Uh, that really attracted me. Uh, the, all the people I talked to that are cur- either currently involved with CU or have been their alumni were really welcoming, open to helping, open to talking whenever I send them an email or send them a message. So that was one thing I was really attracted to that how how you know CU people are uh, really high on humility, compassion and things like that. So yeah, those are the things that really attracted me beyond the fact that it's a great school. It's It has uh, astonishingly amazing clinical experience and it has mm-hmm. a great view from the classroom as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So that's true. And um, when you spoke about innovation, what came to my mind is how, um, so again, while we were uh, discussing about Ritesh's supplemental statement and his other documents, this was something that I remember um, when you have to you have to mention about why you want to join CU or what is that really makes you a CU person student and why they choose you and why do you choose them and I remember this so that's the thing there'll be so many things about the school on the website that you'll find but you need to go and find what matches your statement what matches your interest and for him I think it was virtual reality some I don't know something about innovation like you said yeah. So that you need to go and find and bring it into your application will really help with the interview as well. And also exactly. for them to know that, okay, this person has really found, you know, why found this spot of footing in you. Yeah, your okay. research is really important. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, so on CU again, uh, how was the bench experience like in Colorado? Okay, so the bench experience was uh, extremely smooth. Uh, they were really well organized. I had a current mm-hmm. faculty member and an alumni take my bench. So they gave me a total of four questions for a total time limit of 30 minutes. It was uh, one class two preparation, one crown preparation, one inlay preparation and a clinical case. Uh, the best thing about them was the fact that they, they don't really throw you with you know specific questions. They want to know what, like it is literally a platform where you can showcase all your knowledge about a class two preparation, all your knowledge about whatever they ask. They don't limit your answers. Uh, they just give, they ask very broad questions where, you know, they can, even they can see that uh, how well you can experiment with a treatment plan, how well you can, you know, critique a class two preparation. Can you go beyond the, beyond the usual class two bounds and see beyond that okay. part? So yeah, overall, it was a really smooth experience. Um, they tried to really keep me comfortable. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience overall. This is your first time at CU for Bench, right? Yeah. yeah Only one time. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so that being said, did you, I think you kind of answered this, but still, did you ever contact the school, Colorado or any other schools when you had a doubt? Or how was that correspondence like? Did you ever do that? Okay, so I was in the virtual, they, they conducted a virtual tour last year. I think uh, mm-hmm. it, it happened in October or something like that. And uh, mm-hmm. I was a part of that uh, where, you know, uh, the current director, Dr. Kritika Bhaskaran was there. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, ex- the last uh, director, Dr. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Town was there. And there were current students as well. So that was really a platform to know more about the school, know from the current students and, and the faculty as well. Uh, so that was my first attempt to, you know, know about them. Uh, mm-hmm. I did contact a lot of current CU students and alumni. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I really contacted a lot of them. And uh, that was another sign for me that CU literally looks for great humans. Oh, sounds nice. Yeah. And um, how did you shortlist your schools? Because I was thinking, I know you're one of those applicants who apply to quite a like, didn't really, you know, limited like say five or six. So, what were your parameters when you chose, you know, to shortlist schools? Okay, so the first thing was uh, uh, I didn't apply to a lot of schools that had a green card requirement, like Tufts. Uh, mm-hmm. UPenn had a stricter environment. These are really elite schools, so I knew that the environment would be pretty strict. Uh, mm-hmm. I did take a chance with other schools. Uh, shortlisting wise, I I didn't really shortlist at that time. But uh, I did uh, know that during the interview that while giving the interview, I could get a feel that no, this is not really the program I'm looking for. Because uh, as much as the school chooses you, you have to choose your school as well. Because you'll be linked with it lifelong. And uh, during those application processes, I I think I applied to all the schools. 
uh, but during the interview i could really see that this is not the fit for me here yeah. how did you i mean was it the way they spoke was it what they spoke um uh, see i i am a person who wouldn't really uh, you know be into a school that looks only for study 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 and uh, nothing beyond that so mm-hmm. during the interview you can get a sense whether you know they are looking for they are looking around you as a person or they are just look, mm-hmm. were looking for a clinician who would work there for 2 years and then get a degree and move away people mm-hmm. they are they can be people who choose this the second part where they just want you know to get to do procedures and just move out get a degree and move out but uh, that mm-hmm. wasn't really what i was looking for yeah so i could really see that during the interview and um how did uh, small so just a preface this would be to the ones listening uh, there was a time in between where uh, whenever we contact ritesh for you know in our communication we would speak in english and then he would speak he would text in spanish because he was learning the language so uh, he was learning a new language basically so how did that so spanish especially being relevant to the us right so how did that help in your application and did it like small initiatives from your side like that Did that help? Okay, so my decision to learn Spanish uh, arose when I was in Boston. I saw a lot of people from a lot of patients uh, from the Hispanic background, so that was one motivation to learn Spanish. Uh, over that, I just wanted to, you know, and keep myself busy during the process. Uh, the more free time you have, the more you will, you know, refresh your you refresh your emails and yeah. see whether you have an email or not. I just wanted to keep myself busy, and that really helped me with that. I could meet new people, talk to them, learn about their experiences, share mine, and uh, yeah, it it was basically just to ease the process and uh, keep my mind on useful things uh, rather than refreshing my emails and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you incorporate this in your application as well? You know, in your written application, I think you did. I don't remember though, saying that this is something that you're doing for you know to sort of mingle with the community there. I think uh, I did. I didn't really mention that in my application, but uh, I did mention that I'm learning Spanish somewhere. I remember, but uh, okay. explaining why I'm learning Spanish, I don't think I did that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just to uh, emphasize on what Ritesh said now earlier. So he was talking about how you need to be invested in your application, but also do things that. in your free time that you know you like or you like to engage in it might sound a little contradicting to each other but it is it isn't you need to find that balance where you you know do what you have to do with the application but also take a break and i can't stress on that enough because otherwise you will really just keep refreshing and and i know ritesh is not someone who had it easy he re- he used to you know like get stressed out but he did what he had to do to get out of it so you guys really have to fi- you know find out something that works for you and take a break because this is a long journey even if you get accepted uh, i remember that he's telling me once he got accepted the visa process is even and the loan process is are scarier than the application itself so it's a long um, process anyhow even if you get in even if you don't get in it's longer so give yourself that energy and don't burn out uh, by the time you reach that the uncertainty process. will always be there first you will be uncertain about mm-hmm. getting accepted then your visa then your loan then the dds itself it's a rigorous program so you know take your time and just prepare yourself for the ultimate aim that is dds because you will eventually get in yeah, until you finish and become get the degree and become more like a traditional student or traditional dentist in the us yeah. i feel that uncertainty and then i guess then there'll be bigger uncertainty of what next exactly. but of course <laughs> that just keeps going yeah okay so speaking of another school that you got specifically accepted to which is indiana uh, so did you submit an lor which i'm i'm sure you would have but submit an lor for the volunteering service uh, i mean a community service what yeah. was that like what did you have to do what was required by the because so i think they really required an lor from a us or canadian uh, community service and uh, mm-hmm. i during the interview as well they were i i mean I asked them about the community service, and uh, I got to know that the area, the geographical location of the school in and around the school is uh, really community focused. There are a lot of community programs, and uh, even the interview was focused on that part as well. Uh, beyond that, Indiana's interview was really, really smooth. It was two current faculties, and uh, they were they were really 
uh, engaging in the interview and i could feel that they want to know more about me about what i like to do in my free time how does my day go about what procedures i have done why i'm choosing this program and uh, yeah things like on those change and they really wanted to know about me as a person but yes community service is a good is a great proportion of their program yeah uh so since you were in india for a lot of the time like for how many how many hours worth of community service did you have in the us um i don't really think i had a lot of community service in the us because uh, i i didn't really have a lot of options at that time i just went to a food bank for a few hours a day and yeah that was all about it but uh, there are a lot of opportunities for other people who are not on visa status because i was on visa status i was limited by the opportunities uh okay. yeah so i don't think i really had a lot of experience but i did have virtual experience with us organizations while i was in india uh okay. i think it was the neuroscience of establishment so yeah i did some uh, virtual us volunteering yeah so uh, but you got the letter from the food bank place right yeah that is correct yeah okay so despite having lesser number of hours that's still counted as significant i mean obviously the rest of your application factors in but yeah. for indiana that counted as significant okay yeah that i think is something that you guys i mean everyone can just take note of you know in case you have such limitations in the us you can still once you get letters still try yeah okay uh, so you told us that i so i wanted to ask you if that the community service aspect reflects in the interview so you already told us it did um speaking of interviews out of all the schools that you've interviewed till now uh i have two questions which one was the most peculiar and which one was the most easy or easy going and why for okay so i think the best experience was obviously cu you know, because they were really really welcoming people and uh, despite the fact that it was three on one interview i never felt a bit of in- intimidation from their side they were really good people they really tried to make me comfortable uh next i would say indiana's interview uh not to go about it over again but it was really really smooth and uh, again made me really comfortable and great people mm-hmm. from there as well uh the curiosity wise i would say ucsf was the first for me i had no experience with kira mm-hmm. assessments uh but again yeah. those questions were also you know really nice they gave us like uh, one and a half minutes to prepare or two minutes to answer mm-hmm. or vice versa i don't really remember exactly uop's interview mm-hmm. was uh, uh very new to me it was more like an interview week it was the first time where i appeared for a written assessment mm-hmm. and critical thinking assessment uh, as part of the interview but the one on one one interview was again really really welcoming people um yeah. lastly temples interview took me by surprise because it was an entirely technical interview i never really yes. got to know anything about that from anywhere uh so yes mm-hmm. that was something new to me again Yeah, I think that was all about the interview process and things. So you got a mix of everything. Then you got technical. You got one school yeah. that's technical, one theory, one yeah. um, some a little of everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything that you would like to tell the applicants apart from all that you told us? Any specific guidance, advice? Because a lot of them are either waiting for their invites and. Mm-hmm. or gotten rejections and some of them are starting to prepare for cu i remember you called us at this time i think around like last yeah. year october and uh, you had cu in mind so that is what yeah. like you know i keep thinking about he applied to other schools as well because you wouldn't know for a long time but when he called i remember that uh, his focus was in cu and uh, obviously you know a lot of other factors and luck and all of that played in his favor but also he worked for it and Congratulations again! It's amazing Thank to you. see that you got it. So um, yeah, so keeping that in mind, do you have anything to say to people right now on the same path as you were? Yeah. Okay, so I think I I really know that the whole process is really anxiety-inducing and a really really tedious process. Only you can understand because you are the only one going through it. Uh, I would say that uh, trust me that not everyone has the courage to choose this path. Uh, choosing to you know. throw away everything you had in one country and deciding to take take over your career in an entirely different place not everyone has the courage to do that and the fact that you had the courage to make this decision already makes you a winner trust me on that 
not everyone can do that uh, next i would say that uh, since you are already in this journey you will get in there is nothing that can that can stop you from getting in just make sure that you put your 100% into your application uh, take your family support take any even support you want but it has to it has to come from within you you this might sound like this might sound like very philosophical nonsense i was saying but yes it has to come from within you uh, no matter how much anyone helps you but you have to put your 100% in and uh, just hang in there tight and you will definitely get in and uh, just enjoy the process i would say embrace the process even just utilize this time to make yourself grow as a person uh, while continuing to grow professionally i would say uh, but yes yeah and uh, yeah, just enjoy the process it will happen one day it will happen at the trust me with this it will happen at the time when you're least expecting it <laughs> once you start you know just say that let it happen on its own time and then it will happen once you're least expecting it it will come into your inbox trust me on that and yeah well uh, i mean i would say feel free to reach reach out to me if you need any help or any assistance and i'm i'm happy to help you with anything that's amazing thanks vitesh i will uh, leave his contact information whatever he prefers in the description you guys can contact him directly or you can leave comments on this video and uh, we can drop you know route it through and get the answers to you as well and uh, thanks to tesh for your time i am uh, hoping to see you again on the channel uh, on different uh, some some more assistance for all of you all some more guidance from his experience and like he said if you all need some direct conversation reach out to him and uh, i would request all of you all to spread the word i mean rather share this video because i really feel like this will help you since he just got out from the process and you know all of those small insights and experience that comes from ritesh will be helpful for all of you so um share the video if you feel it will be helpful to people that you know are applying and uh, reach out to us if you have any more questions or if you need more support we'll be back with ritesh but until then um uh, have a great application guys Good luck guys. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Thank you.